Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Modern Life Podcast. Today I'm going to be sitting down with my lovely sister. We're going to talk about Wind River and there's going to be big spoiler alert right off the bat. Obviously, if you haven't seen the movie, go watch it now and then listen to the podcast. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy. Introducing my sister to the podcast, Tubby, say hi. Hey, it's Tabby and Sam here. <laughs> and uh, we want to talk about a movie we both watched recently called... Is it Wind River or Windy River? It's Wind River. It's Wind River. Okay. So, something I found really interesting is, yesterday, the first and like only thing you said to me about this movie was, that rape scene was really hard to watch. Yes, and, there is a rape scene in the movie. And unfortunately, I think We're that is the scene just that... Just diving right into it. Okay. That's the scene <laughs> that like stays with you the most. Right. And I almost think that that's a little too bad. Because mm. there's like there's other really great things about this movie, and also that's the scene like when I talked to some coworkers, that's of course a scene we like talked about. We mm. were all saying, right? If we knew that was in there, we we wouldn't have watched this movie. Really? Yeah. Why? No, I can't. I can't watch that like sexual violence stuff, and especially people at work who were saying like, yeah, I have kids, like I'm not gonna right. be able to watch this kind of stuff, and it's different. Like, yeah, we can all do, like, Tarantino violence right. and that kind of stuff. But I think the realism of it really... Well, I think it does, like... It definitely, like, limits the audience to the movie. Because it's not just, like, a like crime thriller drama mm. you can, like, watch with mm. your 13-year-old kid. Like, I don't know. I mm. wouldn't... And I th the part that got me... Like, because you know how she... Like, so... In the scene, she like she wakes up during it, right? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. there's just a close up on her face. Yeah. But then it like the can't like you get the wide shot of it, and right, that's but, what like that's what. But was, like, really, because I don't even think you needed to zoom out. You knew what was happening. Well, and that's what I'm saying. Like I don't think, but that's what like put that scene over the top for me. Got you know what I mean? Got it. And that's got when it. I was like, oh, like I just felt so uncomfortable watching it. Like I just I don't think you needed that extra shock value of it. You know what I mean? Um, the other thing that kind of ties in with that, where I thought it was a little too far over the top, right. was the scene later on when the rapist is running for like half an hour through the snow. He wasn't running for half an it hour. It felt like half an hour. I'm like, I don't care about this guy. Like, I'm not, this movie isn't about this guy. Like, and then I was confused time-wise because then he, when he dies mm. from his lungs filling up with right. blood it felt like oh he only was able to run for like two minutes or whatever right. but then it showed um jeremy renner like looking through his binoculars and the guy had gone pretty far up the ridge of the right. mountain so i feel like that scene would have been a lot better if i'd seen the whole thing through jeremy's like binoculars hmm. and then just seen him like fall down like we all know what's gonna right. happen I don't know. I th I think partly the movie is about that guy though, because it is like a part revenge tale. Because his That's, friend, okay. his friend is like, whoever did it, like, yeah, okay. get off my porch and get it done. <laughs> but I, I don't know. For me, it was just like I, I wouldn't have shot it that way. Like, okay. So I well, just wanted to okay. well, go I, ahead. I was just saying, just you saying the way it was shot. I found that a couple times during the movie where the editing was just really weird. Like, mm. so there's the big shootout scene, right? That was a great shootout. Great shootout oh. scene. And so she, she ends up under the trailer there. Yeah. And she's like, she's shooting the guy who's running away. And yeah. she like gets him, but not quite yeah, enough, that, right? Yeah, you see the blood fly out. Right. And then... But I guess he's fine. And so she, she shoots him and then she has to like reload her gun or whatever and then, like, the the very next thing that happens is Jeremy Renner shows up, but then the guy who was just there, now he's, like, out of sight. Mm, I'm like, okay. I did, it was just, like, a weird editing. Yeah, I think I kind of felt like, oh, he has that rifle, why wouldn't he right. try to take the shot? But I guess he was already in the tree line. But, but they didn't show that, so I, I guess that's right. where the confusion like, comes in. It's not like Jeremy Renner is, like looking in that direction to like even see if he can take a shot it's just all of a sudden right. the guy's just gone right when I, I, there was just like a couple weird timing editing things that just felt weird to me i don't know so i just want to kind of tell you about something this is from an npr interview with the director uh taylor sheridan um they're asking him what this is based on and he says it's based on just 
it's based on multiple stories right. um, of like the suffering and trauma that right. occurs in these kinds of um, environments. And he says, um, quote, I want to end the film with the statistics. I had two researchers spend three months trying to find one. Reaching out to the Department of Justice, any organization they could, they came back and said, we cannot find one. No one's keeping these statistics. And I said, huh. well, that's our statistic. And that's how the movie ends. That, right. you know, no right, one right, right, is right. recording this. There yeah. is a 2010 uh, Department of Justice study where they survey, uh, not, but it's not women just from Wind River. It's all, it's like Native women. Right. And 56% so over half have experienced sexual violence in their lifetime. Damn. Um, so yeah, like it's definitely something worth making a story about. That brings me up to another point, like just looking up like what other people wrote about the movie. And one of the major criticisms I found was that, so the writer, writer and director, Taylor, same guy, right? Um, his whole inspiration for writing and making this movie was, a, was what you just talked about, right? Yet the two main people in the movie are like... Are white. Are white. Are white, yeah. Which is, like, if if your whole inspiration is, like, telling this story of, like, you know, what goes on in these reservations, but then you have these two white saviors, I don't know, it's just kind of, like, it's like a weird dynamic, yeah, no? It's I don't a, know. I think it's a, it's a good point, but I don't... I, did, it, I don't think it applies to this movie because right. of the way he handled certain uh, like situations and how respectful he was. Right. Because he says he he says like I don't want to I don't want to preach to people. Right. And this movie uses really subtle things to really show you what's going on without that preachiness. So there's right. a couple lines of dialogue um, or reaction. So for example. On Wind River, life expectancy is 49 years. The crime rate is five to seven times the national average. Mm-hmm. And you don't need to see those statistics right. in the movie, but just the reaction of the chief to, like, right. this is, like, a normal thing. This happens right. every day. You know, he's not, like, I'm not used to getting help. Like, this happens right. all the time. Right. So you kind of have these little things in there that really, really lay out for, out for you what it's like to live on that reservation. Right. and. And the way that he's so respectful with it is also like in the beginning when the dad and the son have the little moment with the horse. Right. And the and the son wants to be like his dad and kind of emulate him and he mm-hmm. goes, Oh, I'm all cowboy and then right. Jeremy Renner says, No, that was all a rap a hoe. Right. You know, and the way Jeremy Center uh Renner repeatedly calls Natalie like she's a warrior. That's a true right. warrior. Or like the way at the end of the movie where, you know, um, it's like that. That's my death face. Like, how do you know what death looks like? No one's left to teach me, right, so I, I like made it up. Scene, right. It's all these little bits of dialogue that, like, that convey to you what it's like to right. be a Native American Indian, like on right. the on the reservation. So I get what they're saying. Like, that is a problem that there's the two white people, but I don't think right. And I didn't. I just thought it was an interesting point. Yeah. Like, I didn't have a problem with it in the movie, um, but I do having like these two white characters, it did also, I think he did a really good job with the dynamics of, like, you have the Jeremy Renner character who's, like, just, like, really well respected in the community, it seems like, and then you have this outsider coming in, and she just kind of, you know, everyone's like, uh, like, who's this, who's this new white girl in town, and it's just like... And the way they introduce her, I, just rewatching it, Mm -hmm. they do it perfectly, Mm -hmm. because the car drives up, and you don't know who's in there, right? They're thinking it's like a bunch of guys, and they're like two feds, and then you just see her face, the look on her face, and then the GPS goes, your destination is on the right. Like, you know, and that's all you need to know about that character. Like, they've never been here before. Like, they're in a foreign environment. They need a GPS to get here. Like, it's a young girl. Um, Well, and I liked how she... So, like, yeah, when she first gets introduced and there's, like, the three guys there and she's just standing there and, like, she doesn't have any winter clothes on. And I liked how she's very, like, you can tell... Just by the way she talks, she's, like, super direct, and she's, like, she's not going to take shit from these guys, even though it's kind of, like, I don't know, it's, she's in, like, a completely foreign environment, right? Because she ends up just being, like, like, are we just, are we going to talk here, or, like, are we going to get this shit done, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> she's, like, I don't have time to just, like, talk around here. But I think my main problem with her character is she starts off really strong like that, and then kind of, like, as... I feel like it's, like, this really strong female character that then almost gets, like, 
I don't know. As the movie progresses, she like I feel like she loses some of that. How so? I don't know. I just it's just kind of the vibe I got. I don't know. She when you first. I didn't get that at all. Really? When because she's, I just I felt know. like she was working more with everyone there. Like they were right. starting to build like a team. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Because what, what I also think is really funny because it's an American movie. Everybody like addresses each other by their first name. It's like, oh, hey, Jane. Like, right. even, you know, it's kind of like this instant right. camaraderie almost. Like, right. I do. What I like about her character is it's like she's this tiny little yeah. female, like tiny frame. And I feel like she does the best she can with what she has. Like, in the shootout, she's like, you know, they're arguing about, because they're on federal land, and so the local mm-hmm. police doesn't have jurisdiction. And then she's like, FBI, like, I'm the only one who can do anything, you know? Like, because she's a federal yeah. agent. And there's this weird dynamic of, like, she's the one in charge, but she's also just this really, like, tiny little thing yeah, among you're, all you're these guys. Yeah, you're an adult, barely. Right? Yeah. And she just, she, I don't know, she just has this really, like, high-pitchy Barbie voice and just like, FBI! <laughs> but, like, she's the one who's actually in charge. I, I just yeah. it created this, like, dynamic that, I don't know, just, I haven't that, really seen we before. We need to talk about that shootout <laughs> a little bit more because the, the entire, this reservation loses its entire, like, police force <laughs> yeah. within, like, three seconds. <laughs> I never even think about that. Yeah, it's like all of them, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe, there, I think there's, like, one ex- not no, th- they all. I think really? they all go down because the only ones. He left. says he has six people total. How many? And it was him. I don't think it was. Maybe one guy had I like think, a day yeah, off. I that one lucky like guy. One guy left. Because <laughs> I don't think there were six guys there. It was like one or two left. Okay, my first question about the shootout is, and I, I was kind of, I was like doing some work while watching the movie. So they also they all are wearing kind of the same thing, which was a little like. Right. It, it wasn't very clear Green, who blue, was. Yeah. 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 No, but. So my first question is, I didn't, I didn't, and I don't know if I just missed the shot while I was like doing some work. Like, how does Jeremy Renner know there's gonna be? Because he he like starts warning them on the yes, no, actually I had to look that up um, afterwards because I didn't get that. Yeah, and he does say it in the movie, but he thinks he can mumble every one of his lines, so I missed it. <laughs> yeah, so they. No, I actually had the exact okay. same problem. So Glad they, I'm not the only one. they split up, right? It's right. like the police, we're going to go investigate right. the oil rig or whatever it is. And then Jeremy Renner says, I'm going to keep following the tracks. Because right. those tracks only led one way, then they stopped when they found right. a burnt body, right? right. And right, then right, right. they stopped there, and he goes, Well, I have to keep following those tracks. Right. So he ends up at the same place they're going. That's why he realizes something's off. He goes, Oh, these tracks lead back to to this gotcha. place see but it didn't so when they find what's his name john bernthal right who plays yeah. the boyfriend yeah Matt. so the tracks end there they begin there they begin there they begin at the oil rig because he's following them back to where I they started see. right and then he's because like wait they, a minute they first thought they came from the druggie's house right no no i think they they thought they ended there he says the tracks oh, end here sure? and they okay. only go one way Right. So he's following them back to the original point, and he's like, "Oh, I'm at the same place right. everyone else is, so something must be wrong." So the so the guys by the oil rig, what they they took Bernthal's body out there yeah. with the snowmobile, but then, then they, why why wouldn't they just go back to the oil rig? Why are they going? Back probably to the just to house? kind of like go to a different place, Get go back to drugs. a different road. Go yeah, come back to like a different road to kind of like not lead it right back to. Gotcha. Them, okay, that all makes sense, sense to me now because. The other thing I was wondering, when they go to the the house where all the druggies are at, why does the guy start, like, macing them and shooting at them? I just rewatched that this morning, and I didn't... I still don't understand that. Well, and what I think is when... So when the guys from the oil rig then came over... Maybe they saw maybe something. Maybe they're, like, buddies, something like that, or they just know what happened, right? Maybe mm. they're friends with the guy on the oil rig who, like, put Bernthal's body there in the woods and then came to their house, obviously... So maybe they just know what happened or who the guy is that they're looking for and, like, started shooting at... I, yeah, I still don't quite... Um, yeah, right. I'm a little lost on and that. And, like, why are the 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 dead lady's uh, brother and his friend, why do they start running out of the house? Like, because they, they didn't I think they do were anything. Just, no, I think they thought they were about to get arrested okay. for a drug possession. Okay. And that's why... Oh, that leads me, actually, to a really great point or something that really works in the dialogue. Because a lot of the dialogue, like I've already told you, didn't quite okay. work for me. Right. It was too movie-like. It didn't feel natural. Okay. But something... When they revert back to basics 
it works every time. Like the brother saying, like, right. oh, you just use past tense. We've seen that a million times, but it, it works. Right. Or like the or Jane going like, oh, we didn't mention her name on the radio thing. Like right. you've seen that a million times, but it works. Like right. it's fine. You don't need to reinvent the right. wheel. Like yeah. it's okay. Exactly. But then so much of the dialogue, like <sighs> It just felt like a movie script. It didn't feel real. Like when she's like, "Oh, you're you're a lion hunter," and he goes, "I hunt predators," and she's like, "Oh, why don't you hunt one for me then?" It's like this feels like a movie script. This does not feel like things people would say to each other in I'm real life. Together, a crew. <laughs> like, it, I don't know. Just a lot of the time, like the dialogue missed for me. Like, and also the character that really didn't resonate with me was the ex-wife. Because yeah. she was always she was like my biggest problem. She was always so saturnine and dejected, right. and that's that's one of the things I wrote down while I was watching. So what it's like, I, what's her problem? <laughs> second second thing I wrote down because you see her in like one of the first scenes. I go, mother seems very disturbed. <laughs> She's just like so, like, but not even just sad. Just, just like there's nothing there, right? And even in that second scene when he, she's like, "You're not gonna find the answers you're looking for." Right. If she, all she had done is like give him like a slight smile or something that instantly would have like put a connection there right. just the way she acted it out but it just seemed like she's the she's like the character who turns out to be the serial killer in like a right. different movie yeah, <laughs> like, I don't, it was a that character much. like did nothing for me and it's like you didn't really almost need her there which i know yeah. part of your problem was the dialogue with the son right because they find a dead body yeah. and then the son's yeah. like but it's our day. It's our day. <laughs> day. Apparently, this does happen all the time. <laughs> so that didn't make sense. Um, and there's just a different way. I think you can handle that situation. Yeah, to show um, the con- the tension there between the dad and the son. Just I think just to show that maybe he doesn't spend enough time with the son, like he should. Maybe just the son could have just been like, just something along the lines of like, <laughs> hey, like I get. There's a dead body out there. Ever like, do you think you'll be back in time to like? Are we still gonna be able to spend like any time at all today? Right. Or just something. Right. Something you didn't have different. to go like. It's our day today. What are you doing? And, and some of the things, just some of the dialogue. Again, it's that over the top thing. Like right. the grandma is dressing Jane, and all of a sudden she gets all mad. She goes, "You hear me? You you bring those clothes yeah. back." It's like whoa, oh. like there's a way to do it in that a quiet, menacing way that would have come off like way better mm. than like this freak out and i felt that same way in the scene of jane interviewing the dad where all of a sudden there's conflict between the two and the dialogue wasn't very well constructed to generate the conflict and the emotion right. because suddenly he's like oh do you talk to your mom or oh, your mom like wh- where is this coming from like where's the conflict coming from you're trying to show that there's tension between like the white and the native right and this the way the dialogue was written and it's acted out it did not I couldn't follow it emotionally. Yeah, I, I didn't mind the scene with the grandma where she's giving uh, the Olsen character the clothes because I think it just it gives you that sense of, like, these people are just used to, like, white people taking all their shit. So it's like, this is, like... One For of the f- some reason, just know. the way it was acted out, it kind of rubbed yeah. me the wrong way. Um, I get it. So, yeah. But, um, no, what, what I didn't get is kind of the first quarter of the movie spends all this time setting up this father-son relationship. But then you never return to it. Once once the action starts halfway through, it's like you never yeah. you never even see the sun again at the end. I think right. It's just the movie. No, just I like, don't think you do. Yeah. Like I don't. So then, if you're going to do that, I don't get why you even. Because yeah, like the scene with the horse is cool. Like it's a nice father son scene, and then obviously they're trying to like establish something with that scene where the kid is like, "But it's our day." And then, but it's like, then you never, nothing ever yeah, happens. Yeah, you really don't need his family, do you? You don't need no, you really his don't. family. And, I'm, and yeah, that's what I was right. thinking. I'm like, I, I, I that. think this movie would have been just fine with just him not, you know, you, you didn't have to focus on his family so much. Like, I think you just needed maybe that scene, a couple scenes with the wife, maybe just, or, because you just, you get his like internal struggle just because there's right. a couple scenes where he's just looking at the pictures and he's obviously like missing his daughter and all of that. And so, and I don't know if you just have those family scenes there to kind of like, you know, build the character up a little more and like make him so you can sympathize with him or something. Like, I don't know. I just, I didn't, if you're not going to do anything with it later on, like, why is it there? 
You know what I mean? Yeah, the people looking at pictures thing. That was all the thing. Yeah, it was like a that two was or like, three scenes of that. It, it was like, <laughs> we've seen this a million times. Like, somebody comes up behind you like, oh, I see you looking at this picture. Exposition right. time. Yeah. And then she comes out of the bathroom. She looks at the poem like, oh, I see you looking at that poem. That's another scene Exposition I did Exposition time again. <laughs> that's, a, that's a scene that felt like the most forced to me. Where yeah. She like, he's like, you want anything to drink? And then all of a sudden he just goes into this like <laughs> tangent about his dead daughter. Yeah, that and they was barely not, know that each was other. Clumsy. Yeah. It was clumsy. It just, I don't know. Yeah. It was just like forced character building. You need to like know she has emotions, right? She goes to the bathroom and starts crying. But like, I it, don't know. it wasn't, it wasn't. Yeah. Um, um, another thing this movie really gets wrong. Oh, hi is not that great. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah it's protected by the mountains it also burns down like every year like beware <laughs> but i can see like those two characters finding it like enjoyable maybe <laughs> like maybe they'll yeah, fit that in was there funny i didn't think about that <laughs> all these people got a smile on their face like they know something <laughs> <laughs> also like very high on weed <laughs> yeah I kind of almost like couldn't enjoy the scenes between the couple because the whole time you're thinking like, oh, that boyfriend's about to kill her. Like right. you're like you don't know yet that the boyfriend is like right. innocent until that like last scene where like she pauses, like she has the hand on the Wait. door handle and she's like, once I leave, he's dead, but I have to leave. Like just that pause of her like before she opens the door and like runs right. outside and like. That was well done. Wait, you thought the boyfriend was going to kill her the whole time? I wasn't sure. I was like, because at this point, like, we don't know yet. Like, the boyfriend's, like, dead in the woods. I'm like, is he going to, like, I don't know what's about to happen. I didn't trust, I didn't trust John at that point. Oh, really? See, I don't know. Once you saw the boyfriend dead in the woods. You were fine. Yeah, I was like, well, he obviously didn't do it. I don't know. I don't know. No, no way. (laughs) But I did like the John Bernthal cameo. I feel like it's so rare to have a good cameo these days just because if you have any sort of star in your movie, they're going to help promote it usually just because you have to make yourself stand out from all the noise that's out there. And I just had no, hadn't heard yeah. anything at all that he wasn't like had this yeah, cameo. Same. I was like, oh, it's that guy. Which John Bernthal is always introduced into a movie the same way. He's like doing something and someone like starts really? disrupting what he's doing and he gets his like annoyed like, oh, a little, that- little double take look. <laughs> Like every movie, it's like, like I love John Bernthal, but he's got such like a distinct like. He's got always, a brand. Yeah, and he's just always, he's always doing something, and then someone interrupts it, and he gets like pissed off. That's like every introduction. So the one thing that I didn't understand is um, that once she was running away, why didn't she stick to the road or why didn't she try to steal like one of those vehicles they had? But then somebody, the right. person I was talking with said like, oh no, it's it's fight or flight and they were like chasing her too, which I don't know if that's, were they started hmm. chasing her? Like, I'm not sure no, about that. No, because there's no snowmobile tracks anywhere close to her dead body. Yeah, so I'm not sure they why she wouldn't have her. stuck like to the road or like she just runs off into the wilderness and once you're there like you don't know where you're going. Like. Right. Well, I think if she goes on the road, maybe they, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to like victim blame here. Like, why didn't you like Well, I think if, if she thing, goes on the road, they find her, they but find she her. runs into the woods because it's such like a vast land. Like it's just going to be like impossible to find someone at night. So she just like runs into the wilderness. Or she just doesn't know what she's doing when she's right. just running. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, she is like, she is like, obviously, tra- obviously, like, pretty traumatized with what just happened. So maybe she's not thinking straight either. You know what I mean? Right. Because, like, her boy, she just got raped and her boyfriend got killed in, like, 10 seconds. Right. right. So it's like, I right. don't know. <laughs> Where are my shoes? Um. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Like, you know right away what's about to happen. Like Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Terrible. What else did I write down? Um, and that's pretty much, and that's all I that's had. That's all you got? That's all I had. I just um, can't stop thinking about that shootout scene. I don't know what else to say about it, though. Um, I, I think I want to finish with the shootout scene, but I do have a couple more questions. So why does the Olsen character, the FBI agent, why does she care so much about this one murder? It, like, never really, I feel like I never really got her true motivate. Is she just, like, 
She's a really She's good woke, agent. bro. She knows what's up. She knows they ain't gonna get help. She's like, like, I'm your only hope. Like, it's, does she just really care about, like, solving well, this? Well, something that I actually read online is that the police department there, they have, like, eight guys, right, to cover, like, this right. entire area. And right. they lack the very basic, like, crime solving tools too i get it um i couldn't find anything more about that but i'm guessing like this includes like j not just manpower but like forensics equipment and so forth so she's right. hope you know she's hoping that once the feds come in which isn't gonna happen you know right. there will be because at this point like if it's not you know at this point th there's no hope of solving this murder like, in real life. Right. Like, for us, yeah, because we're watching this movie and we sure. want a resolution. But okay. in real life, like, that's not going to happen. Right. You know, like, yeah, it's just another, like, dead body. she just like, really cares body. about justice. She's like, justice needs to be served to this <laughs> town. And I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I just, with all the other, like, nonsense scenes, like, instead of establishing this father-son thing, I would have been totally fine with having okay. a scene kind yeah. of like... Hey, this one thing happened to me one time, so right. like I no, I get it. That's may good. Maybe like the last, just to have her character develop more. No, like, hey, I, this one murder got away idea. from me, and I'm gonna make up for it, and I'm gonna solve this. One. Like, I just any sort of like greater motivation. I don't know, because obviously the Renner character, his home, he's like he feel he feels like he failed his daughter, so mm -hmm. he's kind of making up for it now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's like his whole motivation. Well, and he, he has multiple motivations, like his friend and everything else. But. Yeah, he's probably the most of all. Right, with, with her, I just, yeah. like, I don't, I guess she just really cares about solving crimes. Like, I don't know. Right, um, I see what you're saying. But, um, okay, let's, so yeah, let's finish with the shootout scene. So, the, my first question is, as they're walking up to the trailer, right, there's just, like, great tension building, which is awesome. Because you don't know the tension's there. All of a sudden, you hear the guy behind, like, why are you cornering me? Like, why are you flanking me? Well, no, like, I knew the tension, because... But even before the guy said that, I, you see the guy in the back with, like, the shotgun. And I'm like, that's... I was like, that's weird. Is it? It's yeah. America. Everybody's no, got a gun. No, it was weird. <laughs> I'm like, that. this feels... Something's off here. Um, but... So, you know, they kind of have, like, this standoff before... And then they all put their guns away. And then the shootout happens, right? Which is weird that all the cops die, even though they're the ones who wear, like, the bulletproof vests. <laughs> like, they're well, I think all ones. of them have... I don't those think those were security, security guards too. They I think they. I, think I thought so. it was just the rapist guy with the bulletproof vest. Um, Is that standard uh, outfitting there at the? <laughs> at the and not, I don't know. I don't know if the cops were even wearing bulletproof. You you don't always necessarily wear a bulletproof vest as a cop. I don't know. I think the one guy laying on the ground who was like, I think he was wearing one, but it, does, well, it doesn't really matter. Actually, well, yeah, no, the Olsen character was wearing one, so I don't know. Maybe they all were. I don't know. But yeah, it's. But yeah. a lot of them get shot in the legs and then the That's heads. True. I mean, it's not like That's the bulletproof true. vest protects you everywhere. Because um, a lot of the guys were, like, scraping on the ground still, right? And right. then they get, like, shot in the head or something. Also, a really great um, repetition of, like, themes and things you see is you start out seeing Jeremy in that white suit. And then it oh, shoots yeah. out to nowhere and you don't really see him, but you just see the shock of, like, oh, there he is with this right. white suit again, like, taking out people. <laughs> <laughs> the and Predators. That that's another thing I thought was, I, I think I forgot to write it down, but in the very beginning of the movie, he shoots the wolf, right? And he's all like camoed out in the snow, right? I'm like, do we really need to wear all this camo to shoot a wolf? Is that really necessary? Yeah, because you sneak up on him. Otherwise, <laughs> <guess>. like... <laughs> Um, no, but, okay, so, during the, sh before the shootout, they have the standoff, before they then put all their guns away, because she's like, FBI! Um, and then the one police guy, he's like, he says to her, you didn't see it, like, you didn't see it, and I, I don't, I didn't get what he was talking about. That they were, that, what they were doing, that they were flanking, like, because she was in the front talking to... Oh, okay, that's all he was talking and about. And also, the way it's filmed, like, we didn't see it. Right? No, we just hear I, the voice from the back. Like, we're with Janie. We're, like, following what's going I'm telling on in you, the I totally, beginning. I, I saw it before the guy... No, no, but I'm saying in that shot that that's happening, not when they're walking up, but it's just um, it's just the head of the security and Jane talking, and it's that whole dialogue right. of, like, we didn't use her name on the thing. Right. And then the dialogue starts from behind. Gotcha. Like, why are you flanking me? So the way they're shooting that particular scene is, like you don't you don't want the audience to see right. what's happening cuz you're like wait what's going on where's the like but okay a weird thing about that is it's like a pretty tiny community so it would, wouldn't be like inconceivable for the security guy to know the name of 
of you know. No, the dead. but they were farther out. I think the police really? chief said it was like fifty. It was a considerable amount of okay. miles to like drive over there. No, he said we have to drive fifty miles just to go five. It's like right there, but the roads are all messed up. Right. But I and also like they weren't on under the same jurisdiction, yeah. and then the guys also said there's nothing out here but snow, and I we guess. work and yeah. like we just do this one thing. Right. So I don't know how much interaction they had. Right. With. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, but the shootout was great, and I didn't I didn't realize this is like a 90 minute movie, which is so rare these days. So when because right. you saw the movie before me, you're like, oh, this is awesome shootout scene, and I I felt like I just started watching the movie, and then like we're building up to this like the scene was there before i knew it i'm like wait is this gonna be the shooter already like oh my god like the movie's almost over like it's like i love 90 minute movies right. it's like it's like the perfect time right. you just don't even get that anymore but um the one weird thing i thought so after the shootout and going back to that scene where she's under the trailer like shooting at the last guy that that's running mm-hmm. away right so, and then she has to reload, and the guy is running off into the woods, and then Jeremy Renner, like, runs up to her, and then he gives her this little, like, smirk smile, and he goes, are you okay? Meanwhile, there's, like, 11 dead guys <laughs> at the end of the His best friend, his best yeah, I was like, <laughs> I just thought it was really strange, yeah. like, hey, are you okay? Like, there was just, like, this insane shootout, and he's just... He just seemed like really lighthearted about what it just happened. I, yeah. I don't know. Okay. I see <laughs> it's your point. Just one thing that stood out to me. <laughs> I'd be like, "Holy fuck!" Like, "Oh, you okay?" Right. <laughs> like, not like I don't know. Yeah, it was like strange. Where I'm sure, like, obviously those scenes were like shot on completely different days. So I don't know if Jeremy Renner just like forgets his motivation as the character <laughs> and what just happened like before he shot that Where scene am I? in sequence. <laughs> that's just kind of what it felt like um, so do you think there's gonna be a sequel where he finally kills the three lions <laughs> it's a metaphor <laughs> you're not supposed to kill the lions <laughs> I didn't think about it I'm like wait he found the lions why didn't he kill them and I'm like oh wait because he's got this big rifle like you would hear the gunshots all the way from the oil rig probably if he shoots the lions so and he also, just like, like waits on that's it. not important right now got a murder to solve well, that's important for the community <laughs> um, <laughs> he's really letting everyone down <laughs> well what i really thought was weird is he shines a flashlight into like the lion's face and the and the lion is like you can he's like yeah. it's gonna like <laughs> fuck him up but then he just like walks away and, and turns, turns his, his back, back and he's standing there with i'm like is that normal? like the is last thing you do is turn your back on a giant yeah. lion but he's I just like that. doesn't seem worried about it at all like oh i'll, I'll just get that lion later <laughs> I just, yeah, I'd be worried about, like, the mama lion coming out of there and just, like, pouncing on me. But, yeah, I just thought that, that was a little strange. And, I don't know. I didn't, I don't know that you really needed to, like, Are you? Are I don't you know if you really needed to show the lions. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I hunt lions. <laughs> I hunt lions. <laughs> um, no, but over, I, overall, I really enjoyed the movie, and I think it's a good movie, and, like, it could have been... A great movie just like this like yeah, a few tweakings and yeah too close because it's time. it's the same guy who wrote hell or high water which i really enjoyed like this guy is really good at writing like it's like this modern i guess a neo-western is what you call okay. it right oh and, that's kind of what this is too and right and he's really good theme. at setting up those environments and like out in but fuck nowhere and just and I think Hell or High Water is a much better movie. And he didn't direct that movie. And this is like his first time hmm. directing a big movie, which, you know, there's going to be, you're not going to make a perfect movie on your first movie. But um, I just think it it could have been like a, you know, like a Hell or High Water. And it just it just falls a little short. Yeah, yeah. And I think if a, if a better director has this script, I don't know, I would have been... Well, we don't I, know, but... I just you, think there's yeah. more potential in the movie, and yeah. it was a good movie, but it's just, just these little things like the father-son relationship and just the motivation of the Olsen character. Just, like, yeah. little little details that it just could have been, like, hey, like, in 10, 15 years from now, I go back to the movie and just be like, hey, this is, like, a great, like, thriller right. modern western. I want to watch it again. It just... Like, it was a good movie, but I don't have any... I'm never going to watch it again. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, if I watched it again, I would skip certain scenes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Um, All right, I think that's damn, pretty much we went, it. Went longer than expected. Thirty-four minutes. Cut it off. <laughs> um, no, but uh, thanks everybody for listening. I think this is only like the third podcast we're putting up. I know we're a little rough around the edges, but we're going to start doing this Just more. like Wind River. Mm, <laughs> it's all in the theme. <laughs> but um, I'm definitely going to have my sister on more. I know the last two times we had my lovely girlfriend Stacy with me. Um, but um, yeah, my sister my sister finds these great things. Like, I don't know, just... Oh, stop. You this do. Is where we're you, find, it out. you find we're great things to out. talk about, little details. And uh, we're definitely going to talk about more movies. And definitely other stuff down the road with her. But, um, yeah, we'll catch you guys soon.